the Baltimore Ravens return to New Jersey to play another New York football team. Week one, it was the Jets. Now week six, they return to the Meadowlands to face the four and one surprising New York Giants. First place Ravens, New York Giants surprising people. We're going to talk about it and break it down here on the Fight Zone Podcast. Only place giving you your sports how you want it, when you need it. going on flex on family it's your boy god's favorite host the host of the moist bkd back on the flex on podcast only place giving you your sports how you want it when you need it and i'm back again with another baltimore ravens video week six preview against the new york giants do us a favor hit that subscribe button hit that like button leave us a like and hit that bell for all notifications give me a prediction and your score down below in the comments let me know what you're looking up seeing ravens coming to this game beating the cincinnati Bengals on sunday night football last second just took a field goal we saw the return of rodney stanley we saw Patrick McCarry return. We saw J.K. Dobbins start to look a little better. We saw Lamar miss some plays, miss some throws in the passing game. But at the end of the game, the last drive, he put the team on his back literally and carried them and carried the football to align Justin Tucker for a game in the field goal. We saw the Giants go overseas to London and beat the Packers, surprisingly, with their defense stepping up in the second half as well. And Saquon Barkley running wild like Harper Manny and runs wild on the WWE. I just got some quick keys for you guys. I'm not going to be before you long. Get my prediction, and I'm out of here because I think this week is a very winnable game. Probably one of the more feel-good games with the Ravens. I don't think they're going to be puffy pants hammer time, but I do think the Ravens have a good shot to win this game as they are the better football team and they have the best player. Between Lamar Jackson and Saquon Barkley, the two best players on each team, I'm taking Lamar Jackson because he touched the ball each play at the quarterback position and can do it all. And we've seen the improvement in the passing game this season. Giants have the defensive coordinator former of the Baltimore Ravens, Wink Martindale. He will be coming after Lamar Jackson. We know Wink will bring pressure and try to challenge this offense. He's doing a hell of a job. His defense believes in him. He's got some playmakers over there. We'll talk about it in a second. But it looks like Ronnie Stanley is practicing. We got Justice Hill practicing, but I would probably hold off on Justin Hill playing because hamstrings are tricky. They may need one more week to make sure they're right. Another week of practice, another week to make sure they're right because if he gets hurt again, he could be out four to six weeks this time. And worst case, B season injury. Ronnie Stanley paid over 30 snaps last week. Could I see him doubling that, playing over 50, over 60 this week? I think we'll see that. I think we'll see some Patrick McCarry as well. Ben Cleveland didn't practice. Powers will be a left guard. Zeitler, Lindemann, and Moses. I think it's going to be really interesting to see the offensive line. That's a matchup I'm looking for. Uh, the inside guys, Eitler, Lindebaum is a rookie, and Powers up against Lawrence, Williams, and Dibido, their defensive line guys, because they got a good defensive line due to Giants. I think that's their best aspect, and I think they could create some problems with the Ravens where they could have a hard time trying to run between the tackles. They may have to look to push things outside. But let's look at the keys to the game. I think the Ravens looks like no baiting and he didn't practice. He looks like he's going to miss another week. Uh, like I said, Justice Hill is back limited. I would probably hold off on him for another week. Give me J.K. Dobbins a little bit more. We saw him liking the tweets about guys saying on Twitter that the Ravens need to trade him and use him more. Ajabo's back at practice. Bowles is back at practice. Edwards is back at practice. Looks like all three guys look pretty good. So we could see all three back within the next four weeks or so within the month. Um, before even after the Ravens buy. So those are good signs for the Ravens as well. Let's get to the keys. Like I said, don't have a lot of keys today. I'm going to keep it short, sweet, and to the point. Number one, got to start fast. We know the Giants fans are going to come into this game hyped up, zooped up, zooted, excited, full of energy. A great day in New York. It will be in the 60s, clear weather. Their team's 4-1. and one. They're overachieving. They're loving the new coaching staff of Dave Ball and his crew from Buffalo. Got to start fast. Don't want to get too many quick three and outs. And then this crowd builds the momentum, gets behind their Giants and push them to making some plays. Because if you're not able to extend drives and convert on third down, that could be bad as the crowd could get into it. My second one, be ready for Wink and the Blitz. We know Wink Martindale knows his offense. That's why I'm thinking of Greg Roman to be innovative and creative and do things Wink may not expect. We're going to get a lot of cover zero. We're going to get a lot of pressure, a lot of one-on-one opportunities on the outside for the wide receivers and tight ends. 
which I'll talk about in a second. But be ready for Wink and handle the blitz. Stanley held up pretty well last week. Moses, Zeitler, Lindebaum, I think, had a pretty okay game. And the left guard powers did okay as well. If they can play like they played last week, and I think this offensive line will continue to get better as the season progresses, it could be good for Lamar in the offense. Third, wide receivers and tight ends got to win one-on-one again. We said this last week, Duvernay. Did a hell of a job. Andrews, he always does a hell of a job. I think Wink is going to try to take away Andrews, a lot of double team, a lot of press man at the line. So Duvernay, let's see if Wallace or some of those other guys like Prochet can make some of those plays. They had an opportunity that they missed last week and improve on this week. Let's get the ball to J.K. Dobbins more in space, much like they do with Saquon Barkley, not just running, but throwing as well. And then you got to execute in the red zone, whether that's touchdowns or field goals. Every point on the road is valuable. You got to take the opportunities when you get them. Use Justin Tucker, the best kicker of all time. Use innovative plays in the red zone. Play action. Use Lamar. Get them outside the pocket and let them drive in in points. Touchdowns, field goals, we got to get points in the red zone. And don't turn the ball over. Defensively, you got to keep Saquon Barkley under 100 scrimmage yards. Scrimmage yards. That means rushing and receiving combined, not over 100. You keep him 100 or lower or under 100, I think you're in good shape if you're the Ravens. He can break off a two yard gain here, three yard gain there, four, five, six yards. But then he's going to keep hitting that wall and he's going to bang through it and run right past you for 40, 50, 60 yards to the house. He's a home run header, and that's what he does. Watch him in the passing game. Put Pepe Williams on him. Don't put these linebackers of Bynes, Patrick Green on him. He will get cooked and roasted. Put Pepe Williams on him. Use Kyle Hamilton if you need to. Use Kyle Hamilton, please. Defensively, no mental errors. You can't commit mental errors. We know Marcus Williams is out. Lord knows we're going to miss him. Wrist injury we talked about on the postgame show. Kyle Hamilton, you want to play more. Geno Stone's going to play more. Chuck Clark's going to play more. You guys got to come up, make plays, communicate, and make no mental errors. Keep Danny Dimes in the pocket. Daniel Jones only has... One pass, one for six, over 20 yards. He's not going to kill you from the pocket. If anything, he's going to force turnovers, which I'll talk about next. But he does a good job on bootlegs and scrambling outside of the pocket. Keep him in the pocket. He's very athletic. He can run the football alone with Saquon Barkley and create a problem for your defense. Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones will commit some turnovers, fumbling in the pocket, throwing some picks. Get two of them things for us and help out your offense and create a short field. Force him to commit some turnovers because if he has to drop back there and you're making him one-dimensional, I think he can give us one if not two. Maybe Kyle Hamilton can get a pick, something. And no mental errors, as I mentioned. So defensively kicks Saquon Barkley under 100 yards. Keep Danny Dimes in the pocket. Force turnovers and no mental errors. Real quick special teams. Win the field position battle. Duvernay's better than their returner. And Graham Gano is a hell of a kicker. So you got to make sure that you take the points because they're going to probably take the points if they get an opportunity to kick as well. Graham Gano, former Raven. But – Got to win special teams. Justin Tucker, make it field goals. And Jordan Stout, let's continue to see some improvement. Last few weeks, you've been a little shaky. Not detrimental, but a little shaky. Let's see you do better this week. And again, offensively, start fast. Be ready for Wink and handle the blitz. Wide receivers and tight ends win one-on-one and execute in the red zone. My score prediction, I think the Ravens do win this football game. I think it will be a tough, grinded out physical defensive low 20s or less scoring game, maybe a lot of field goals. But I do think the Ravens can force at least two turnovers from Daniel Jones. They can keep Saquon Barkley. I don't know if they'll keep him under 100 because I think he will just get the ball so much and they will try to get him the ball in space on screens, on option routes, on wheel routes, on just dump balls out of the backfield. They'll try to pitch it to him, try to hand it to him on the outside, inside. I think he'll probably get somewhere between – 85 to 125 on scrimmage yards, but I, I would even say if they can keep under 125 scrimmage yards because you get Saquon Barkley, yeah, he may get 100 yards rushing and 25, 30 yards receiving, but if they're not scoring touchdowns, they only get 14, 17 points out of it. I think the Ravens offense can outscore them. So I'm going with the Ravens with a 23-19 victory. I know it's a five-point spread on this game. I think the Ravens are a better team. The Giants are a very improved team, well coached with Wink and Dayball in the crew. I think Wink will try to bring some pressure and get after Lamar, but I think Lamar is the best player on the field. He will get about 70 to 85 yards rushing, and I think over 200 yards passing. Uh, probably probably 180 to 200, 210 yards passing. But I think Duvernay, Andrews, they'll do good and, and be the difference. And I think we'll see more J.K. Dobbins starting to look like himself, Stanley, Makari as well. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know your predictions. Let me know who's rolling with you in this Ravens Giants game. Of course, we'll be live after the game. It's 1 p.m. kickoff, so not a late night post-game show, but post-game show will be live after the game, probably sometime after 4, 4.30 p.m. Hit the bell to know when we go live. Check out all our other videos. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you comment down below. Give me a prediction. Again, I'm rolling with the Ravens to move to 4-2. and two, Remain in first place and get a win over the Giants. We're 2-0 in the Meadowlands in Jersey against the New York teams. The 23-19 grinded out win. Both defenses, I think, will play well. Ravens get two turnovers, and it helps us out. 
Fuzz favorite whole signing out, y'all. Wave a slot. Stand up. Let's get that. Duh. Peace.